Friends in Garden Valley, Idaho recently had a septic system put in and it cost them $18,000. We saved a bunch of money, even though up here it wouldn't have cost that much. Thank you. This is out where the leach field or drain field is going to go. I have the laser set up, seeing where it's going to end up, how much dirt I'm going to have to move. Something worth mentioning here is when you're pushing over trees and you don't have something that has skid plates all the way underneath it, you want to remember that the roots come up in the air and if you don't stop quick enough they can go up into your radiator or radiator hose or some hydraulic hoses that are underneath the front of the rig. The septic tanks being hard to get, well, I went ahead and dug the hole. Two weeks later, finally arrived. You can see the inspectors out watching what's going on. You're outside pink lines on the ground. They're about eight and a half feet apart from the center. They come out of Lewiston through Builder Supply. I marked the hole with a couple of pink lines so we knew where to back in. I thought about trying to set the tank myself, but they said it weighs about 9,000 pounds. And that would put the crane on my shop truck at maximum capacity. They want the hole to be about six inches wider than what the tank is. I went ahead and made it a foot, just in case for a little air. There's gravel in the bottom of the hole to make it leveled out so the tank sets flat straps and the holding points on the tank are so that they just about have to have one of their straps to be able to move it when it's in so we just let them go ahead and set it and we did the rest by hand lining it up getting it set down This is a divided tank to keep the sludge in one end and the water to run out the other. You have to make sure that you get the inlet and the outlet side placed in the proper place where you're going to have your inlet from the house and the outlet going to the drain field. Put the level on after the tank was in. You could see it was level side to side, but it was just a little bit off when in lengthwise. Evidently I didn't get the hole quite as big as I thought I would so we had a little trouble getting the lifting straps off. It was close on one edge so I had to get the bar and knock some of the dirt out of the way enough to where the strap had come off. You need the hole deep enough so you got anywhere from six inches to a foot of dirt on top. Plastic tanks you can get an extension that will sit on top of the tank to put your covers at ground level or just barely below. Concrete ones don't, they have concrete lid. Once it got the tank in, why well, the weather turned bad and it started raining. So it was almost a full year before we got to put the drain field in. We had to get an extension from the health department. Counties and states all have different regulations. You need about a two to three inch drop from the outlet of the tank to where the distribution or D-box is set, which the lines come out of to go to your drain field. Trying very carefully just to put a little bit of dirt around the edge of the tank, put too much in there, get too much compact in that wire level to crack the sides and push the sidewalls in. Some of you may have noticed the change on the tractor. The tires were wore out when we bought it, and chains were half the cost of tires, so we just bought chains to put on the tractor for traction. It works good because we don't go anywhere on the highway. I didn't pack the dirt in around the tank, like I say, afraid of putting pressure and cracking it. And it settled about six inches maybe over the winter. We debated a long time when we came back from Oregon 
kind of equipment to get. Personally, I like excavators a lot better, but we have a lot of snow in the winter time, so I need something with a pretty good sized bucket and has a little more speed running up and down the road than an excavator. And we knew we were going to have lots of digging between the foundation for the house, putting in the septic tank, drain fields, putting in water lines, power lines. So we settled on a backhoe. Here we have the snap ring came off the end of this pin on the outrigger. So I'm just hooking a piece of wire on the end of it. I have the ground partially cleared. And I'm double checking on how much you're going to go down for the leach field. Anyone who is starting a new piece of ground, I would highly recommend you just go buy a good laser transit. The amount of money you would spend on it is a lot less than it's going to cost you if you have to have somebody come in if you're doing the work yourself or if you have to go down and rent one. I was lucky enough to have a friend that has one. I've had it for almost two years doing odd projects, putting up a barn with the shop, putting in septic tanks and everything else. So they really make a difference in how fast you can do things. String levels are all right, but you end up, you never know, there might be a little bit of sag. And like the outlet pipe here, I think there's only supposed to be about a three inch drop in the most in 15 feet. String level is pretty hard to, to keep that accurate. And the leach field itself, you're only going, I believe, a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch a foot. So in my case, we had a 70 and 77 foot runs. That's only three inches in that far. Pretty hard to keep track of. The field probably had three to four percent drop from one side of it to the other. I was just trying to get it a little closer to being level, rather than having to put one line down a lot deeper than the other. Trying to get the ground leveled out when you put your D-box in, it has to be perfectly level or awful darn close to it so your water distribution goes out equally into however many lines you have to have. What are you doing? Trying to find a level for the tank for the output so we know where how deep you gotta make the hole trench. They make both concrete and plastic distribution boxes. Everybody suggested the concrete. They're a little bit more stable, they say. Our ground is all hard clay. It's still it's a lot easier to level the box on a gravel pad rather than trying to do it on the clay. Once you dig the clay up, it all turns to powder. And it doesn't pack back very well. What are you doing, you idiot? <laughs> Getting out the holes for the inlet, the outlet, and the two lines that I ended up running. The first thought I was going to have to run three 90 foot lines, three feet wide, for the each leach field line. So I cut three holes in it as it ended up going to have to go two with six foot gravel beds. When you fill in around the pipe, I used gravel. You want to make sure that you get down and get underneath the pipe with each side so that it doesn't shift around and make sure you have your gravel underneath. It's fairly solid so your pipe doesn't get a bow in it when the ground settles. They make a plastic ring which goes in the end of your pipe inside the D-box. It has an offset hole in it so that when you start filling your D-box up with water, you can turn those plastic rings that act like a cam and raise or lower the level that goes through the pipe so that they go through pipes evenly. That pipe I'm working with looks like it's got a big bow in it, but actually doesn't. Trying to get some last minute adjustments with the level on the box. Inside the tank, there are T-pipes on both ends. The inlet side, which comes from your 
house is just a little bit shorter than the one on the outside. It's just a hair longer. So these pipes are actually going into T-fittings and not just straight into the tank. We're using the drain rock drain field. So we need to put at least 8 inches of drain rock underneath the bottom of where the pipe will sit ditch has to be three feet on each side of the pipe so it has to be six feet wide i tried to make it seven just for a little extra and then once the pipe is in another bunch of drain rock has to go in so there is enough that covers the pipe and the rest of the field which would give us just about 14 or 15 inches it has to have at least 12. we got the ditch dug which means the bottom end needs to be about three inches lower than the top end because that's about how much drop we're having in the pipe. When we started putting drain rock in, got it in, flattened it up the full way. It was real easy on this first ditch because I had lots of room. The second ditch, I had to put the rock in as I dug the ditch because I couldn't get behind the other end to put rock in. So that made it kind of a pain. Putting the pipe in the drain rock, I used the laser level and every five feet of pipe I went down one quarter of an inch so each pipe went down about a half inch so that gave me just a little bit over a three inch drop from one end to the other you don't want the pipe flat because then the water won't run the full length of the pipe before it goes out through the holes into the drain field and if you make it too steep it runs right straight to the bottom end and so the top end isn't doing anything you'll get your bottom end saturated so you just want a very gradual drop and hopefully the water runs out all the way down there's no sludge comes through the drain field through the tank like i mentioned before it's a two two tank system so that the sludge stays in the first part of the tank and all of the liquid drains to the second part and that's what goes out into the leach field i put the drain rock in the second ditch but i couldn't get around get it smoothed out i had i tried to put enough in there to cover the pipe so what i ended up doing was going around the far end of the field and knocking down the berm and then i could drive on it with the backhoe and scoop out the ditch line for the drain rock to go in i took a pry bar that had a handle on it and i made a tape mark at eight inches and then one at 12 so that when I put the pipe down, I could keep pushing it through the rock as far as the dirt to make sure I had the full 8 inches of drain rock underneath it and then the 12 inches over the top. The pipe had laid out in the field, so it was not in the field but on a trailer. It had warped just a little bit, had a little bit of curve in it. That's why I ended up going 5 feet increments instead of the full length of the pipe. And that way we can push the rock underneath the pipe so that it had a good solid base to sit on. So when we put the rock and the straw and the dirt over the top that it didn't make it sink and get a belly in it for the water to catch on. Once you get the rock all settled in and raked over fairly smooth, why well, then the inspector wanted to come look at it and check for rock dip and fall in the pipe. Check the tank to make sure the T's are in each end of the tank for the sludge to flow in and the water to flow out. Then when he got done with that, then we could go ahead and lay in the straw. I don't know how a person would do this without a laser level. I guess because when you get your string line, if you use a string line, why well, once you got the pipe level, then you'd be covering up the string line with the rock. Laser level is about the only way that you can do it. Most of the ditch I had pretty good. The little poots there didn't help much. Every time I went up on down the bank, well, I should knock dirt into the ditch. You'll see here in a minute. When I got right down to the end, I didn't have it dug deep enough, so I had to take the rock out that I had and dig the dirt down a little bit further to get down to the end. Have to, at the end of your pipe, you also have to have a three-foot space between the end of the pipe and the end of the ditch. So anywhere there's pipe, there has to be at least three feet of space on each side of it. You need a couple of places along your pipe that are left open so the inspector can see those. Digging the ditch, it is a lot simpler if you can start right next to your D-box and as you go down have somebody come along with the receiver of the laser level so that you know how deep you're getting. Hey, here I am on the very end. I gotta scoop the rock out and take the dirt out another two or three inches so that it is down to get enough rock underneath the pipe on the very end. 
see me there checking the tape measure to make sure I was had three feet on each side of the pipe to the edge of the bank of the ditch. Did we get the okay? okay the inspector has been there, okayed everything. So I'm trying to clean up the top of the tank. You can see on the left hand side of this hole where the top of the T for the inlet pipe sticks up. And there's one just the same on the outlet side. Could probably have manhandled the covers into place. Why do it when you've got something to make it easy? I cut three pieces of plastic. One to put over each manhole cover and one to put over the D-box just to kind of help keep the dirt out of them. Plus, you know, when you're getting there, when you got to dig them out. I got a piece of paper to make a diagram so that in any event when we have to have the septic tank pumped out or we have a problem, why well, I got some measurements basically from trees two points from, from two different places so they have a cross reference approximately where the D-box is, the distance between it and the tank, and the two lids on the tank. It's always nice to know where things are if you have to dig them up. I did the same thing when I put in the water lines at all the junctions. Then I measured across from the D-box over to the far drain field. The first drain field just comes right straight out of it. You can see a little white pipe sticking up on the left hand side of the plastic there that's where the inlet is going to come in from the house i just went ahead and put an elbow and a t there so i knew where it was and got it away from the tank so when you do any digging or anything or not bumping anything and accidentally get dirt into the tank now that's all been expected we're laying a straw mat on top of the drain rock uh they need enough so that it creates a mat so it doesn't let the dirt go down into the drain rock and fill up the space and ruin your field. You can use filter cloth for gardens or the Tipar or stuff that put underneath road beds to hold it all together if you want. Um, we started out, I was going to get some small bales, but they were pretty expensive. And then a good friend who is a rancher, he said he had big square bales for 20 bucks a piece which the small bales were seven, so I went and got two big square bales. That's why you see us run them in with the wheelbarrow and the backhoe. It took just almost one full square bale for each drain field. They wanted about 10 inches of fluff straw on top. They figured then when you put your dirt on top to level out the field, that makes a good solid mat that the dirt won't go through. Nell was doing the one side with the wheelbarrow, and then I started on the other side. I had to go clear down to the end, drive all the way around. And I brought straw up with in the bucket, which would give me about 10 feet of straw. Then I would pull the dirt in and cover the straw up, and then I would go get another bucket of straw. In order to get into one section, I had the, there was a tamarack stump in the ground, which I pulled out so I could drive around without taking a chance on poking a hole in the tire. So I would get most of the big chunks of the wood out of the hole. Eventually they rot, then you get another hole again. So here we have the big, two big bales on the trailer, I'm loading some in the bucket to take around to the far end and start the other ditch line. Tried to fill both ditches as I came along, which gave me a little bit more room to work, maneuver in, filling them up. Figured it was a little bit better to do it with the backhoe than try and do it with the bucket. As I filled them in, I tried not to drive over the pipe, either drive in the center or on the outsides of the ditch line so it didn't pack in and make it too solid on top of the pipe. Trying to put the finishing touches on now, have a little ditch on the end for a water to drain off the bank going around. Rob's getting this all smoothed up. We plan on this being our berry patch and we'll probably stick some flowers and who knows what all in here. If you're interested in the description down below, I've listed other homesteaders who have also done their own septic system.